American Environmental Review is a national platform where nature and technology meet, where protecting and preserving our precious resources take center stage, where the spotlight seeks out and shines on the environmental innovators. This editorial series, featured on public television, takes an inside look at the outdoors, explores how the decisions we make today impact each of our tomorrows. Soil Science Society of America was handpicked as a featured guest because of its commitment to the environment in which we live. Hello, I'm Morley Safer. Technology isn't the only way to help take care of the planet. As we're about to see, smart planning and dedicated people can also make a real difference in protecting and preserving our environment. More than a billion organisms live in a single tablespoon of soil. Some of these organisms help save lives, while others help mediate the environment as we know it. It is where life is generated and sustained on the continental surface of the Earth. It's where sunlight is harvested and carbon dioxide is drawn from the atmosphere and combined with water that is sucked up from this soil and turned into the materials of life, into the sugars and starches and proteins that sustain all animals, including us. In fact, Americans produce over 200 life-sustaining crops in the soil that makes up our farmland. Another not-so-obvious benefit of soil is that it helps regulate the flow, storage, and quality of our water. And so as water moves into the top of the soil, it passes through the organic material, it passes through the sand, silt, and clay, it exchanges different types of chemicals and elements and minerals, and then passes out the bottom all clean. We forget that the soil is really a very clean medium. It is the site of cleanliness. It is where pathogens and poisons are neutralized and all waste products are turned into nutrients. The soil is clean, essentially clean. It's very interesting that people and animals have died of all manner of diseases over the many centuries and been placed in the soil, buried in the soil, and yet the soil disinfects them all. And the fact is that it was soil scientists who coined the term antibiotic, having discovered in the soil the products of microbial action and actinomycetes that produce materials that suppress disease. Growers have always known the importance of clean water and healthy soil. But with help from the Soil Science Society, new ideas for boosting soil productivity and improving its environmental impact are being explored. We've learned uh, in our research that we are able to help trap nitrogen within the cropping system by using uh, cover crops and of course others like uh, Dr. Russ Grinsfield at the University of Maryland have had similar results in their work. Uh, we've also shown that applying moderate amounts of poultry litter to a cropping system can help maintain the phosphorus level in the soil. Doesn't increase it, doesn't really add to the uh, phosphorus runoff from that cropping system but helps to maintain the amount of phosphorus in the soil and of course that's always important for healthy soil and sustainable agriculture. This is really an exciting time to be a, a soil scientist. Uh, there are many opportunities and challenges that we face in the 21st century that necessitate the need for well-trained soil scientists. For example, we know that 99% um, of the food and fiber that is produced comes from the soil. And the world's population is expected to increase 8 to 10 billion by the year 2050. And so this really necessitates the need to have soil scientists that will help us meet the world's needs for food production. In healthy, well-managed soil, there's often an increased amount of organic matter, which boosts the productivity of the soil. This in turn reduces the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, which is a major contributor to global warming. We can use the soil as a storehouse. We can reabsorb or resequester carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into the soil. 
And that can help to mitigate this process of global warming. With world population increasing at the rate of 90 million people every year, the amount of agricultural land is decreasing, along with healthy soil. People need to understand that uh, agricultural sustainability is critical to the future. Uh, there are so many practices that are understood now to help with sustainability. Uh, if others could adopt these practices, apply them on their farms, uh, I think we could make significant progress. Somehow people all over the world have lost their ability to appreciate the soil. We walk on it and we just don't even think about it, we just consider it dirt. And so it's not really something that's in people's minds. And I think that one of the reasons that that has happened is that we don't talk about soils in school. It's not part of the normal curriculum. But actually, the study of soil science can fit into many, many parts of the school curriculum, even from kindergarten age all the way up through high school and beyond. We can study chemistry using soils, all the different um, chemical reactions that occur during filtration or soil fertility, um, our mineral degradation are all key things that teachers could incorporate to teach those um, using soils to teach those types of concepts. Physics, anytime we talk about water or heat as it flows through the soil, the different sizes of the particles and their ability to um, transmit energy in water, those are all very important topics that can be taught in physics class. And of course, biology, the soil is so alive. There's billions of organisms, even in a small handful of soil. So the interaction between all the organisms in the soil, whether they're the large ones or the tiny little microorganisms, provides a great way to teach biology to, to kids of all ages, as well as um, how we grow plants, how we grow, um, how everything is dependent on the soil for life. Our environment is a complex system that is affected by natural processes and human activities. And we're learning that the more we know about it, the better chance we have to help it thrive. The Soil Science Society of America is uh, made up of about 5,600 members. And these come not only from the United States, but from abroad, a number of countries internationally. Uh, the members of the society are constituted of academicians and universities, uh, people who have positions in industry, government. We also have a large contingent of students, particularly graduate students and undergraduate students that are members of the Soil Science Society. Our involvement with the society has been very beneficial in terms of putting us in touch with other professionals uh, that also work on sustainability and have been able to really help us understand the nutrient cycling, for example, in our, the soils of our cropping systems. John F. Kennedy once said, the supreme reality of our time is the vulnerability of our planet. It is a timeless statement. World population, consumption, and technology push forward, often more quickly than natural resources can support, or with consequences more costly than we can afford. The need for a unified effort to nurture, renew, and protect the planet has never been more compelling. Therefore, once again, American Environmental Review extends a special thanks to the companies that have risen to meet today's environmental challenges. This has been a presentation of WJMK.